Welcome to the semi-final playoff round wrap-up here at this 15th season of Blood, Sweat, and Beers. As you reflect back on the season, for those of us who don't have a meaningful game to play, in this championship week. Have you been doing some of the what if scenarios? What if I had started this player? If I had just made this one choice, this one decision, it would have totally altered the trajectory of my season. Do you go back to the draft and think, if I had only? It's hard not to do that when we see what's transpired over the last four months. I know I have. Why in the world did I pick? the number one receiver and number one running back on the same team, and it was the Raiders. Why did I pick the number one running back and the number one tight end on the same team? Not only does that just destroy you when both of those teams have the same bye week, but unless you're talking about the greatest show on turf, or perhaps maybe the 49ers most week, the Cowboys some weeks, there just aren't enough eggs to go coming out of those same baskets, right? You need to spread that around just a little bit. So definitely have my what ifs. I'm sure you have some of your own thinking back, if only. But unfortunately, there's only so much we can do now because there are really only two games that matter. Let's see how we got here. Looking back to our scores from this past week, Pancho took care of business. He took commission out of commission uh, and that really wasn't too difficult it was actually 30 points was much closer than I expected it to be especially after Thursday night and then after Saturday the wide receivers that, that Poncho had were were just way too much to overcome especially when you forget that the game starts early in the morning on on Monday and start a player that's been ruled out so that was just a terrible uh, roster decision poor poor game management Looking at that score, it was, like I said, closer than I thought it would be. And actually, it was possible, would have been possible, for Kamish to win that game. Although it would have been highly, highly unlikely, improbable, nearly impossible. As was discussed earlier in the week, the running uh, plan was to, had Josh uh, Jacobs been ruled out, it would have been to put his back up in 17 and a half points. That alone wouldn't have gotten the win. However, if in a, in a highly unlikely, crazy, Joe-like fury, I, I could have removed Devontae Adams from the lineup and had Calvin Ridley as the second wide receiver and went with a double tight end set. Flexed in Joku would have been a two point win, point and a half actually. Uh, but highly unlikely. That that's not really a scenario that anybody should be upset about. I'm disappointed at a at a player that was ruled out. Realize it didn't really make a difference in the end. So Poncho moves on to his seventh appearance in the championship game. The other game that mattered, the other game in the winners bracket, was Gloop and Aaron. This was also one where Aaron just didn't have quite enough firepower, not enough points in the game. He had enough points on his roster. They just unfortunately were riding the bench. That's gonna be a rough would have, could have, should have. It's gonna haunt Aaron. Hopefully brings him back a little stronger, a little hungrier next season. Because had he gone with Pickens at any place in his lineup, he would have won that game. He would be advancing to the championship round, looking for his third championship as well. Tough to predict that one. That would have been a highly unlikely scenario as well. However, what I will say is there was no reason to put the commander's defense in. If you had asked me, I would have told you they will disappoint you. The Ravens defense sitting there on the bench, those were the points you needed. But now you get to join a, a long storied line of fans who just are disappointed with Washington football. Sorry, Aaron. We'll see what we can, we'll duke it out for nothing. In, uh, in this round ourselves. 
Gloop moves on to his 12th appearance in the championship game. A couple other games were played that mean absolutely nothing, but some games were played that, well, they do mean something. Apparently, some teams forgot that this was the most important game in the consolation ladder and failed to score 100 points. So, you can see, Alex Billy was, he did not like being renamed. He is going to change his name, I'm guessing, as soon as the final scores are in for this week. It puts a wrap on the season. He gets his naming rights back because he cannot be in last place. And, well, Joe climbs himself out of the basement that he found himself in at the end of the regular season. He will now be playing for 7th or 8th place. Can't lose or can't be uh, in last place. He'll retain his naming rights. Well, let's look ahead to what really matters this coming week. Two games. Two games matter this week. The rest of them, eh. But the championship game, obviously that is the most important game. That's really what matters. Number one versus number two. That's how it should be. No one hobbling in. No one backing into the playoffs with a losing record, only to find themselves with a hot hand in just the last couple of weeks. Number one. Verse number two, Poncho comes in riding a six-game win streak, averaging a blistering 150 points during those six games. That is, minus the bye week, that is the longest win streak we've seen this season. Now in his seventh championship game, if he were to win, he will become one of the most efficient champions we've had. It took Keith eight games, eight championship tries to get number three. John can do it in seven. We'll see if he can make good on that. Gloop, unfortunately, he went, he lost three straight to end the regular season, dropped himself out of that number one spot, but wins the important playoff game last week, now finds himself in his 12th appearance, but looking for just his second championship. So impressive that he took a couple years off and still has made 12 championship games out of 15 seasons but we might be calling him the Kirk Cousins of the Blood, Sweat, and Beers League if he can't win the big game again. One out of 12 uh, is, is not fantastic. Although some who don't have any would probably say uh, they would take that. That would be an improvement. Projections have Gloop uh, in the lead as far as, uh, well, today, midweek goes. We know that that means absolutely nothing once the players step on the field. We don't know who's going to have a historic performance or who will just be ruled out right before the game. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they split their games in the regular season, so we'll have to see who has the hot hand, whose team has the hot players, and uh, what roster management comes into play, uh, if it comes into play. We hope, uh, we hope it'll be a good championship weekend here, and it'll be an interesting game. The other game that matters, the final the last place, the number nine, number 10 spot, uh, Jersey Birds versus Light Rail Coyote. Neither could score 100 points in, in, in the last, the most important round of the Constellation Ladder last week. And here they are fighting for their own naming rights. Projections have them very close. However, if you look back, Light Rail Coyote owned Jersey Birds this season, including a drubbing in the first round of the playoffs where he won by nearly 80 points because Jersey Birds posted the season low. But in the regular season, Light Rail was also able to, to clean sweep. And so three straight wins over Jersey Birds. Who's gonna, who's gonna end up losing their naming rights? We know we've already got some excellent suggestions for their team name starting week one. I know we're looking forward to that. Personally, I'm giving the edge to Light Rail in this game. He has the number one kicker in fantasy. What else can you ask for? Enjoy championship week in this 15th season of Blood, Sweat, and Beers.